Namo Buddhaya, this is Abhinav Bulecha and I welcome you. In this uh, video, I am sharing uh, some of my learnings uh, on Buddha's teachings on giving, right? Giving, generosity, dan, right? Dana is the Hindi word. So, uh, what I have done is that I have done my research on the Buddha's discourses and I have taken the main points from the various sutras, the uh, the links to the all the sutras, which uh, all the discourses on the giving, uh, uh, which I could find, it is given in the uh, description. So you can check the individual sutras also if you want. So uh, I will start. What I will do is that there are lot of um, uh, learnings. So and I have made points on those learnings. So I will uh, maybe break this video into parts, into two or three parts, right? So that to make it more manageable. So uh, I will just go like question by question, uh, like question answer format. So, where a gift should be given? So, uh, Buddha was asked where a gift should be given. So, Buddha's answer was wherever your heart feels inspired. So, my understanding is that it is basically what is your, it's not like a compulsion that you should give or donate only at one place or you only at some other place. There may be some customs or something that, you know, that have been prevalent to donate. But Buddha's teaching was that give wherever your heart is inspired. It can be to a old person, it can be to a uh, to a poor child, it can be to an uh, orphanage, it can be to uh, 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 a monastery, wherever your heart feels inspired, there you should need it, right? So that is like my, my understanding of Buddha's teachings. Uh, which gift is better? So the question to Buddha was put up as to which gift is better. So Buddha says, there are mendicants, these two gifts, a gift of things of the flesh and a gift of the teaching. The better of these two gifts is the gift of the teaching. So Buddha clearly says is that the gift of the Dhamma, Dharma, the gift of the teaching of the Buddha is the is the much better gift. As So one is the gift of the flesh. So what is the gift? Flesh means in my, my understanding is the gift of the possessions about you know the food and the you know clothes and lot of things and you know all these things. And other is the gift of the Dhamma, right? Dhamma, that means gift of the teaching of the Buddha. So that gift, if you give to someone, it may be by way of like, you know, you give a book or, uh, you know, of uh, Buddha's teaching. Like I read this book uh, in the Buddha's word. So I, I use this book for the purpose of my uh, um, preparation of this video. Uh, and any, uh, you know, uh, any gift of Dharma, like if you see sutacenter.net, Right, that uh, that website, they have done such beautiful work in compilation of the. So what they are doing is that they are doing the gift. They are giving the gift of the teaching to the world, and they have even you know the best that they have waived all copyright on that work. Right, that is free to use. Bhikkhu Sujato, uh, Bhikkhu Bodhi, all the people at Sutta Center. These people are giving the gift of the Dhamma. Right, so that is the much better gift that we can give. Right. Okay. Third is that to whom a gift is more fruitful, right? Now, uh, one question uh, may come is that to whom if I give a gift that is more fruitful, right? Because for say, what happens is that when we give a gift, it gives us merit, right? So there is naturally a question in our mind that, you know, our mind wants to know that where if I donate or give a gift that will be more giving me more merit. So Buddha says is and I am actually reciting the actual phrase what Buddha says. In the same way, a gift to anyone who has given up five factors and possessed the five factors is very fruitful, no matter what family they have gone forth from. Right? So Buddha says, it's not, so Buddha has always said about this one thing, is that it doesn't matter which family you are born, which caste. Buddha was totally against caste system. And he was the one that, who, he stood up to the Hindu Brahmins, who said that, you know, we have a superior caste and he was the only one who stood up and that's why he faced a lot of ridicule from them. Buddha said is that there is no person who becomes wise through the caste or through the family that he is born in or the tradition that he is from. It's basically what virtues he has cultivated in him that makes him a Brahmin or a true Bhikshu, right? So Buddha says is that irrespective of what a, wherever a person comes from, the better and the more fruitful gift is a person who possesses the five factors and who has possesses the five factors, 
who has given up the five factors and possesses the five factors. Now the question will be, what are the five factors that that Buddha is talking about? So Buddha further says in that discourse, what are the five factors they have given up? Sensual desire, ill will, dullness and drowsiness, restlessness and remorse, and doubt. These are the five factors they have given up. So these five factors are basically the five spiritual hindrances. So person who has given up all these five factors. So essentially what my understanding in plain terms is person who is like, who is at a, at a, at a very highly developed level through his practice, uh, who has given up these spiritual hindrances, a gift to that person is much more fruitful. And what are the five factors that they possess? The entire, the uh, Buddha says the entire spectrum of uh, ethics, immersion, wisdom, freedom and knowledge and vision of freedom. These are the five factors they possess. So just to understand in a like a lay language, what I will say is that the person has given up the five, uh, 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 five hindrances and lives an ethical life, lives a pure life, lives a life of freedom. So anyone... You know who who has achieved that thing. If we give the gift to them, then the gift is more fruitful. So does it mean that we should all only give to them? No. My my view is that Buddha is not saying that you should only give to these people and not give to other people. Yes, there is a difference between. So see, if you see karma, the theory of karma, Buddha says it's a very fine tuned law, and it's it's all relative. That means that if you cheat a person. Or if you insult a person, insulting a Buddha takes you directly into the lower realms, right? As com compared to insulting a person who possesses a very low moral character. So, similarly, doing even positive karma like giving to a Arahant, right? Or a Buddha, right? Uh, is much more, much more will give a merit as compared to giving a gift to a person who is of a low or uh, immoral character. Because if you give a Dan, to a person who is immoral character, what he will do is he will buy from that money that you give him, he will buy drugs or he will do all the wrong things only. So that is where the difference is. But it doesn't mean that we do not give. We should give, but the merit will depend upon the receiver. But what my, under what my understanding is that we should give with a pure heart. We should not discriminate. But yes, uh, one thing we should keep in mind is desist from giving to immoral people who who do the wrong things who kill and steal and don't give don't support and give the gifts to them or donate to them donate to like monasteries to sanghas where you know that they are working for the welfare of people then donate to them right okay then uh, another thing is buddha says is give before it's all over so buddha is saying the urgency see what we think is that you know everything will just be there and we will be having a long life and buddha is always i have already made another video where buddha says death is fast approaching what are you waiting for start living a noble life your karmas only will take you will 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 go with you so what buddha is saying is that do not wait for the death to come when death comes then it's all over right so give before all over so uh, i'm just reciting the specific lines from the discourse and as the world is on fire with old age and death you should rescue by giving for what's given is rescued this is so beautiful that we think if we give something then it is lost no what we give is rescued right whatever so if death is coming and if I give something, that only that giving, the merit that I get, that only stays with me. The possession that I have, my possessions will go. But the merit will be there. And that merit only I will carry. Remember the fifth remembrance, what Buddha says in the five remembrances is that only my action, consequences of my actions, only my actions, my karmas go with me. All everything is left behind. So our task here is to understand the urgency of the approaching death and death can approach us anytime. So start doing general, generous acts in whichever less way we can possible, right? So even if you uh, have earned 100 rupees, you can donate 10 rupees. If you earn like 1000 rupees, you can donate 100 rupees. Whichever be your capacity, but start being generous. Don't be stingy. Don't be in Hindi, the word is conjuice. Don't be conjuice. Don't be stingy. Be generous. The time for being generous is now. 
So Buddha says, in the end this corpse is cast off along with all your possessions. Knowing this, a clever person would enjoy what they have and also give it away. So Buddha is saying, a clever person, a clever person means a wise person will also enjoy whatever he has and also give it away. That means he also enjoys. So some people, you know, this this tendency, they are so stingy, they are so conjuice that they do not even enjoy what they have. They want to enjoy the things, they have so much money, but they don't go on trips, they do not enjoy, do not. So what is the use of that money? Right? Because of their stinginess, they just remain where they are and they keep sulking. Buddha says a wise person, what he does? He enjoys the money, whatever he has, and also gives it away. That means he earns the merit. And that merit that he earns, he will be reborn in higher realms. Also, he will get all the luxuries because of the merit that he has gained uh, by spending. At the same time, very important thing to remember is that do not only give because of the earning of the merit for some pleasure in the future realms. Because everything is impermanent. Even if you go in the higher realms, then that is also impermanent. And we will come back in the lower realms only. In the human or lower realms. The important thing is to cultivate. Our one goal should be to, to liberate. That is our one goal that Buddha has asked us to be. Liberate ourselves. And how to liberate? Morality, practice of concentration, that means mind development and wisdom. Okay, Buddha says, Knowing this, a clever person would enjoy what, what they have and also give it away. After giving and using according to their means, blameless, they go to the heavenly place. How beautiful. So they use the whatever things they have and they also give it away and then they go to the heavenly place. So do not delay. Now, five timely gifts. In this, Buddha is saying, there are five timely gifts. Which are the timely gifts? Number one, a gift to a visitor. A visitor who comes to you, a gift to that is a timely gift. Second, a gift to someone setting out on a journey. Someone is, so you can give them something helpful, something which will help them in their, in their journey. So that is a timely gift. Third, Buddha is saying, a gift to someone who is sick. Like if you go and some, to a hospital or some, see someone who is sick and if you give someone, so that is, that's why we always do that, no? That when we go to visit a sick person in a hospital or some place, we always carry like a, 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 a bag full of fruit or something for that particular sick person. So that is, a, that is a timely gift. Fourth is the gift at the time of famine. 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 That means any, you know, a loss due to some floods or famine that comes. A gift, that means a donation to like someone uh, or some agency who can you can donate, who can take care of those people at the time of famine, that is a timely gift. Fifth is presenting the freshly harvested grains and fruits first to those who are ethical. Right? That so for example, so when you cut the crops and there is a first so you know uh, harvest that you give to someone who is ethical, that is a, again I am just relating it, it it to the prevalent culture. In India, it is there. I don't know in other countries that when you uh, get your first salary, it's always, you know, what you do is that you give that first salary to your mom or your dad because they have, you know, made you come where you are right now in your life. So you dedicate your first salary and you put that first salary in your mother's hands or your father's hands, right? So that is like I could just recollect it from what Buddha is saying, the five timely gifts, right? Okay, then uh, importance of giving giving gift of food, right? So here uh, uh, Buddha is saying that uh, on the gift of food, mendicants, where a giver gifts of food, they give the recipients five things. What five? Long life, beauty, happiness, strength and eloquence. So he, this discourse, Buddha is, this is a small discourse where Buddha is actually saying the importance of giving food. So when we give food to someone, it's not only that food we give. We give them long life, beauty, happiness, strength and eloquence. And Buddha says, all these five things, since we are giving to someone, we also get those things in return. So that is the importance of giving food. Okay, uh, then I will take up this knowing the fruits of giving. And after this, I will close this particular video because it's already around 15 minutes. And then I will cover all the other in the second video. 
knowing the fruits of giving. So, uh, here Buddha is saying that if we just even know the fruits of giving, we would have donated even our last mouthful, right? That means we would not even eat, we would just donate our whatever food. If we, we, if we know the impact of our giving, what can do for our spiritual benefit, we would even do that. So Buddha's actually wordings are mendicants. If sentient beings only knew as I do, because Buddha knew, right? Uh, the fruit of giving and sharing, they would not eat without first giving and the stain of stinginess would not occupy their minds. The stain of stinginess, right, would not occupy their minds. They would not eat without sharing even their last mouthful, their last morsel, so long as there was someone to receive it. That means, so long as someone was there to receive your food, you will share with them. And don't worry that even that this is the only last mouthful that is remaining for you. You will even share it. It is because sentient beings do not know, as I do, the fruits of giving and sharing, that they eat without first giving and the stain of stinginess occupies their minds. So Buddha says, having given food in abundance to those worthy of a religious donation, after passing from the human realm, the givers go in heaven, and when they have arrived there in heaven, they enjoy all the pleasures they desire. The generous enjoy the fruit of giving and sharing. So, given the importance of giving, one should, we should try to give as much as possible. While taking care of ours and our families, try to give, 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 right? Give with a pure heart, give with a pure mind, right? So this is it. This is the part one of the video. I will continue. There are a lot of further uh, uh, things that uh, I have compiled uh, on the Buddha's teachings on giving, which I will cover in the second part. So thanks for watching this video. Do reflect on these teachings It's and do put these teachings into practice in whichever way you can and do share your reflections and your thoughts in the comment section thank you so much for watching this video namo buddhaya namo buddhaya